Howdy, tech folk. Welcome back to the folksiest tech channel on the planet. Tech of tomorrow. Me and my pet Wilbur. Yes. All right, now I'm just messing with y'all. What's going on? Glad to see you guys back here once again on Tech of Tomorrow, Elric, your host. Now, what's going on today? Got the Silverstone SST FT04B, which means black with window. Now, this is a pretty damn cool full tower case. It's made of jet aluminum all on the outside. Interior made of solid, good solid steel. That's right, steel like Superman, cause he's super, you know what I'm saying? And it's just all in all, it's a really cool case. Now you guys are gonna go, hmm, very interesting stuff. Now, this thing's not really totally geared for doing like water cooling. You guys will see that the back doesn't have like the little round holes and stuff for putting all the tubes through. Not everybody uses that, but still, usually cases that are geared towards that'll do that. But you can use an all-in-one system in this pretty easily, which we actually do. We were able to get a hold of one from Silverstone and we installed it inside the case quite nicely. This thing's pretty expandable. It's about 200 bucks. It's got a window. Um, I think you guys are gonna like it. So with that said, let's jump in and let's take a look at this damn thing. So let's just start off right here on the front where we can see that everything externally is made out of black aluminum. Now this is aircraft aluminum. It's made of very high quality material. On the internal, the actual chassis itself is made of steel. Now you guys can see they have their little snowflake logo up there on the top. As we traverse over to the right side, we can see there's two USB 3.0 ports, a microphone port and a headphone port. Now as we also traverse back to the left-hand side, we see the start, the reset button, and then here's just a full-blown side shot of the side of the case. Right here, you guys can see, here is the manual and the accessories box. The little black things you see inside of here, these are actually to hold in your extended video card. You can use up to 13 and a half inch video cards and these things are used to hold them in. All their screws and necessary parts are also located in the side of this box. So now we're taking a look at the back. Now here at the bottom, you can see there is a single slot right here for a 120 millimeter fan. Also to the right of that, that's where your actual I.O. is going to be, your rear I.O. of your motherboard, because Silverstone does things a little bit different. They actually turn these things upside down, so it's quite interesting. As we move up the rear of the FTO4B, you guys can see there's eight expansion slots, and then above that is the power supply. Now one thing to be noted that it says that it doesn't matter what length of power supply you want to use, this case will accommodate it. Here we take a quick look at the bottom of the case where you guys can see there's four rubberized feet and all the little indentations and things that you see are actually for the inside of the case where you can actually fit four 2.5 SSDs in the bottom down there or hard drives, whatever you wanna choose. Taking a quick look at the top of the case, you can see at the bottom of the picture that this right here is the vent for the power supply is going to be and up at the top on the left hand side there, these are your power on and your HDD light. Okay, so now let's move back to the front of the case. Now we have the door slightly ajar right here. And as you guys can see, there's actually foam padding all along the inside of the door. There's also a dust filter. And currently there are two 180 millimeter fans. Now these are their air penetrator 182s. You guys can also see that the wiring harness for this is very simple and easy to use. And on top of that, you have the two external 5.25 bays. So I've now removed the back panel to the case and we're gonna start disassembling it slowly before we put everything back inside of it. Now, right here, you guys can see there's plenty of space for all of your cables and everything to go in and out of the case and be routed quite nicely. Also, all the parts and everything back here are very nicely made. There's no sharp edges, nothing to cut your hands on, and nothing is actually too flimsy at all to make it junky. Now let's take a closer look at how much room we're gonna to have to do the cable management. As you guys can see from our measuring tape, you get actually about one inch of room in the back to do your cable management. Now, this should be optimal room for you guys to be able to hide all your cables and do all your cable management properly to have a nice, clean, and elegantly built system. So now as we're looking straight into the case, we can see that we have the 3.5 hot swappable drive bays at the bottom. And to the left of that, we have a drive cage for an additional five. Now in this bay, you could fit up to five 3.5 inch hard drives. We can also see the complete wire harness located here, including everything for your external USB, your speakers, your microphone, as well as the fans. Like I said though, before we actually build the system inside of the case, we're gonna basically gut it. So you guys can see at this point, we've gutted out all of the drive bays. 
The only bays that are available are the 2.5s, which are located on the very bottom. One thing that is cool about this, and Rodney Reynolds, you'll definitely give this a thumbs up, is yes, hoorah, the motherboard tray is removable. And as you guys can see, it's very clearly marked about the different types of motherboard that you're going to put in. So there's no guesswork whatsoever. Depending on the size you want to use, it's clearly marked. And the FT4OB will use up to extended ATX motherboard. So it'll use all the way from the mini ITX all the way up to the big bad boys. Real quickly, let's bounce back to the front of the case. We've removed the dust filter and you guys can see the 280 millimeter air penetrator fans installed. We've also removed both of the drive bays from the 5.25 there on the top. Another thing that's really cool about the Fortress FTO4B is its ability to be pretty much stripped down all the way to nothing. As you guys can clearly see, we've stripped this thing down to pretty much totally bare bones system. Now, one of the key things that these guys have talked about in their build is the chassis. How it's made of really high grade steel and the externals made of that high grade jet aluminum. You guys can clearly see the foam that's all along the front panel. For sound reinforcement, this same foam is located on the side panel of the case where the window is located and on the back. These are all made to keep the case running very, very quietly. So now that we've tore the system completely apart, let's start putting it back together. So let's start off by installing the two SSDs. And on the bottom, you can use up to four 2.5 inch SSDs. We're only going to use two in our build because we've got some other plans for that space. Now, for our purposes, we've reinstalled one of the hot swappable 3.5 bays. This is where we're going to keep our Western Digital hard drive. Now, even though we're not going to configure the system this way, we thought we would show you guys what it looks like anyway. So here's the standard 3.5 inch drive bay reinstalled into the case, just so you can see it. So here's a real quick shot of the top with the power supply installed. Now we went with the Silverstone 750 watt version. It fits in there pretty good. It's not that long and it actually fits really nicely. Now, as we move back to the front of the case, we've used one of the 5.25 bays to install an optical drive. You guys can see here's where you access the CPU from the rear of the case. And as we bounce around, you guys can see the rear IO. And this motherboard mounts upside down a lot differently than other standard cases. One thing that Silverstone is known for is their unique way that they mount motherboards inside of their cases. So here's what the motherboard looks like just mounted inside the case. We had no problems at all installing the motherboard. We use an R9 290X video card for our build and obviously we had to remove some screws and a couple brackets from the rear expansion in order for the car to fit in there. Now, like I said previously in the video, you can use up to 13 and a half inch cards in this thing. So that's pretty incredible. Up to 13 and a half inches long and up to six inches high. So pretty much the hugest, biggest, most craziest video cards in the world are gonna fit inside of this case. So now folks is where things get a little bit interesting. Now, previously in the video, I told you that you could use a different type of configuration with the fans. And so we're here to show you that now. We used the Tundra Series TD-02 all-in-one Silverstone liquid cooler for this build. And that has two of its own 120 millimeter fans built into the rad. Now on the bottom, we have a single 120 millimeter fan now that's moving the air through the system. Now, one thing to take serious note of is that the TD-02 didn't just mount natively in here. We had to do some slight modifications to make this bad boy fit. Now, this wasn't anything that you got to go out and do any type of crazy mods for, but we did have to use long bolt and a nut to be able to make it to work. We didn't have any just screws that could screw in there. So taking a look inside the case, you can see that everything is very, very easily and simply installed. Now we've also moved some stuff around. Like I said, we were going to include and keep one of the hot swappable 3.5 inch bays. We've now moved this over to the right hand side and we've moved the two SSDs over to the left hand side. That's right, we shook up the boat. But beyond that, you can see this thing's very, very cleanly laid out. As we open the door, you guys can see clearly there are two indicator lights located on top. One is for the power and one is for the HDD. The FTO4B also comes with two fan controllers, which are located down below the two 5.25 external bays. The one on the left controls the intake, the one on the right controls the outtake, or you can reverse these if you so choose. The case door locks and unlocks by a set of magnets located on the right-hand side of the case. 
All right, folks, so we did this something entirely different this time. Never actually did a case review this way before. We thought it was pretty interesting. We hope to actually improve upon it. So right off the bat, I want to say, hey, thank you guys for, you know, sticking around to watching to the end. And let me hear your comments and stuff down below. If you guys like this, let us know by hitting that like button below. If there's things you didn't like, go ahead and please leave your comments and stuff like that down below because we always want to hear. Well, anyways, there she blows. It's your mom. I, I mean, I mean the case. So that's pretty much it. A little bit over 200 bucks, full tower. Lots of expansion. You guys can see you could probably fit probably three cards in SLI or crossfire mode in there, whichever way you guys want to choose. You can use a big old huge power supply, extended ATX motherboard. So pretty much all the motherboards out there are going to fit inside of it. Overall, I think this thing is actually a pretty nice product. Now, some people around a box are going to be like, whoa, 200 bucks. But hey, when you're paying for high-end jet aluminum, like, hey, it's very expensive stuff. I mean, this thing actually is very, very nicely built. And that's one thing I want to really mention. When these guys set out to make this case, they were trying to hit three markets at one time. They were trying to get good looks. They were trying to get excellent cooling. And they were also trying to get it to be very silent. Hence all that foam padding that you saw on the doors and the back of the sides of the cases and all that stuff. And those respects, they've succeeded. So make sure before you complain and go, ah, take a look at all the different things that they were trying to hit upon. And I think they succeeded. Now, is it like the Mona Lisa, the most you know interesting thing in the entire world? No. But is it very elegant, simple and nice? Yes, it is. Everything's very easy accessible. The door very easily opens. All your reset and power buttons, all the stuff from the side. So at the end of the day, I gotta say, I like this case. Hope you guys too wanna see your comments down below. Once again, if you're interested in making a system like this, all of the parts that we're using in this system will be listed down there below in the description. So you hit that little show more button down there. It will bop on down where you guys can see links to all that stuff. The case, all the parts. So. If you want to mimic it, hey, ta-ding, ta-ding, you can. Peace out. Love to see you guys back here on the channel. Later.